All right, everybody, welcome to the lesson, uh, the video here for lesson number 11 on graphing, uh, kind of putting everything together here um, as we get moved forward through this unit. So for question one, it says to write an equation of the trigonometric function graph below, describe its amplitude, midline, and period. So for this function, it looks like a cosine function, just an upside down one, right? I see a minimum value of two and a maximum value of eight, which means the midline is going to be halfway between those two. So the midline is actually going to be five. So I could say the midline is y equals five. The amplitude is how far the midline is to the maximum value. So the amplitude in this case is going to be three. And the period is how long it takes to complete a full cycle. So I see in this graph a complete cycle of the cosine curve. I start at the minimum, I go to the maximum, that's half of a cycle, and I go back down to the minimum here, so that's a full cycle. So the period is 30. Now to write an equation, I don't want the period. I want to know the amplitude, uh, the frequency. So I know that the period times the frequency equals 2 pi. So if the period is 30, I can divide both sides by 30, and I can get a frequency of pi over 15. Now, since this is an upside-down cosine curve, it's been reflected over the midline, I can say my equation here is y equals negative 3 cosine of pi over 15x plus 5. Now, this is not the only equation you can have here. You can have a sine function that has a phase shift or something crazy like that in it. This would just be the one that I would expect you to get. Number two says, while graphing the function f of theta equals negative 2.5 cosine of 3 times theta plus pi, Julie stated that the function had an amplitude of negative 2.5, has a period of 3, and was shifted pi units to the right from the cosine function. Explain Ju uh, Julie's three common mistakes. Well, number one, Julie's mistake here uh, for amplitude is amplitude can't be a negative value. Amplitude is a distance. So one Julie's mistake is the amplitude is always positive, right? The negative is just a reflector. It's reflecting the graph over something. The second mistake she has is that the period is 3. Well, the 3 in the equation is the frequency, right? So the frequency is 3. That's what's in my equation here. So the period, if you use the PB equals 2 pi equation, winds up being 2 pi over 3. Very different. And the last says that theta to the right, well, we remember in an equation, if something is added, it's actually going to shift to the left. So we could say the function f of theta is shifted left, not right. So those are her three common mistakes there, right? These are mistakes I see people make every year in my classes. So there, there's three common mistakes there that we potentially could have made. So number three says to graph three cycles of a function. So it wants us to graph three cycles of this sine function. All right, so this wants us to graph three cycles of the sine curve. So the amplitude is four. The midline is y equals negative two. And the frequency is three. Therefore, the period is going to be period times 3 equals 2 pi divided by 3. So the period is 2 pi over 3. So when I start to scale this out, I'm going to go out four boxes and put a 2 pi over 3. I'm going to go out four more boxes and put another 2 pi over 3. So that will be four pi's over 3. And I'm going to go backwards for to be at negative 2 pi over 3. Now, each one of these uh, little segments here is going to create a full cosine or sine curve here. So we want to show all of these points here where I'm going to change direction. The next thing I want to do is I want to scale myself vertically. So the amplitude is 4, the midline is negative 2. That means the minimum value is going to be negative 6. 
So when I draw in the midline here, it's at negative 2. I know I'm going to go down 4 and up 4 from that, so I want to make sure I have that spacing. Since it's a sine curve and a positive sine curve, it's going to start at the midline. After a quarter turn, it's going to go up 4. After a half turn, it's back at the midline. After three quarters of a turn, it's down 4. And then after a full turn, it's back to where it started. So there's one cycle of the sine curve. If I repeat that pattern, I can wind up creating more cycles of this curve. So here's yet a second cycle of the curve. If I wanted to make a third cycle, because that's what they ask, I would just do the pattern backwards. So here we go. Same pattern, just backwards. So there's your function, right? You have one, two, three cycles of the curve. The next one asks us to graph a cosine curve, but it just wants one cycle. So we could scale this out a lot, right? So we know that the amplitude is 1. I know it's upside down because of the negative. I know the midline is y equals 5. I know the frequency is pi over 4. So if I do pi over 4 times period equals 2 pi, I can figure out the period is 8. So that means I'm going to go out eight boxes, and I'm going to have a halfway point and a quarter point. Those are going to be where my turns are. It also tells us that our um, midline is five. So if I make my dotted line at five, and I'm going to go up one and down one from there, right? So I don't have to scale the y-axis because it goes shifts up so much. Now this is a cosine curve. Remember, negative cosine of x is going to look something like this, where it's like a bell shape. So it's going to start below the midline. Then after a quarter turn, it's going to go to the midline. Then after a half turn, it's going to be at the maximum. After three quarters of a turn, it's going to be at the midline. And then after a full turn, it's going to be at the bottom. And then when I graph it, I just want to make sure it is definitely curved, right? This should be a cosine curve. Again, it's one cycle, so that's it. I am done. All of these functions, I could ask you the range. I could ask you uh, the domain, all of that different stuff, and we could go from there, right? But the basic idea is you're looking at all the different parameters that we need to be able to do for this class, all right, so that we can move forward and start talking about all the word problems tomorrow. Yay, fun, all right? Hopefully this video helped. Uh, best of luck with your homework, and I'll see you all in class tomorrow. tomorrow.